Well, hi, Allegra. <gasps> Hello, Kim. How are you today? I'm good. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me to be a part of your podcast. Oh, you're welcome. Um, so what's going well today? What's going well today? I was able to make it to um, an exercise class this morning. So I always just feel good about doing that. It was a hard, hot habit for me to start, but I started it. So I'm always like, good job. That's wonderful. What kind and of, what kind of class? I started going to orange theory. Oh, was, good for you. Yeah. It's, it's, I hadn't, I'd seen the building, but never really thought about it. And then anyway, I, I decided to give it a shot and it's a good fit for me and how I, what I need to kind of keep doing things. So anyway, so wow. I feel good about that. And my dog did well in her crate while I was away. So that's always reassuring. And oh, now I'm yeah. here with you, which is a good, a good way to spend my afternoon. Yeah. So I, to start off with, I want to talk about your interesting past. Okay. <laughs> um, I read that you've tracked mountain lions, that you were I also did. in the Peace Corps and you uh -huh. were a biology teacher. Can you talk mm -hmm. a little about, a little about all of those? Oh, fun. I love talking about those adventures. So yeah, I, in college, I went to UC Davis and I studied wildlife, fish and conservation biology. I'd always had a passion for like working in nature and with animals. And so that degree really suited my interests. And after I graduated, I got a job um, in the Malibu mountains, actually helping some wildlife biologists kind of track coyotes and bobcats. And there was a, a, a trapper on the team who would trap and radio collar these mammals so that we could kind of monitor how they were moving through neighborhoods. So I got to kind of go out with him a couple of times just to see how he did his job. And as a result of that, had other opportunities just where I got to kind of just be in the work, which was really exciting. And then I decided to uh, join the Peace Corps and that was a grand adventure. It took me to Bulgaria. I was there from, I want to say May of 2000 to September-ish of 2002. And when I got back from the Peace Corps, I was like, well, what do I do now? And a friend of mine had said, oh, you should check out Teach for America. And I was like, oh, maybe I'll sign up for another program that's going to kind of facilitate me going out and trying something new. So I um, applied to Teach for America and they offered me a spot in New York. So in the, I think in May of 2003, I moved from Los Angeles where I was staying with my parents to New York on my own and went through a really quick crash course in teaching and started grad school at the same time that I got my own classroom at a school in the Bronx and became a science teacher for eighth graders. And it was some of the most rewarding and challenging work I'd ever done. Was that with, was that still with Teach for America? Yep. It was two years with Teach for America. What is Teach for America? It's a program that helps place new teachers, usually in high needs communities where they need a dynamic workforce and they need teachers to come in. And um, they kind of, they, I don't know if they fully sponsor, but they partially sponsor, sponsor you getting your graduate degree. So I was getting my graduate degree in education at the same time that I'd been placed in a classroom um, at a school in the city. And it was wild. It was, it was incredible. It was a, a very, teaching is, is an art form and it takes like everything else. It takes time and practice and a lot of failure and it's hard because, you know, it's especially if you're, you know, working with students who have a lot of needs and you're trying to meet those needs, but all, you know, it's just was a very dynamic time, but incredibly rewarding. So that's kind of a very short version of how those three kind of adventures came together. It's working in the field, you know, in wildlife biology, joining the Peace Corps to do some work with a nature park in Bulgaria and then being like, I'm going to move to New York and be a science teacher. <laughs> what a learning experience for you. It was incredible. Okay. So how did you discover coaching and when did, was that right after? Yeah. So I, um, I retired from my teaching job. So I, I spent two years in the Bronx teaching eighth grade. And then I spent three years um, at New Rochelle High School, where I was teaching 
uh, at the high school level, I was teaching living environment and AP environmental science. And um, also during that time, I'd gotten married. And so now where am I at? Now I'm, I think I'm getting close <laughs> to 2007, 2008. I retired from teaching to have um, my first child, my daughter. And I had her. And then um, when she reached a certain age, I was just getting a little bit antsy. And I was like, well, what am I going to do now? So I kind of started like, I started my own Etsy shop oh, and this is going to get to coaching. It'll get to coaching, but I'd started my own <laughs> Etsy shop and I was like sewing these really cool zipper pouches. And just like, it was kind of my first foray into kind of having my own gig, you know, and trying to get my stuff out there. And after my son was born, no, I think it was when my daughter, it was before my son was born. So it was, it was the year after my son was born. I was in a space where I was like, what am I going to do next? Like, what is my next project going to be? And I knew I wasn't going to go back into the school setting. I just, I wanted to be home full time. Um, I looked, I started academic coaching actually, where I would go and work with students kind of like tutoring, but it wasn't necessarily subject specific. It was just helping them with things like study skills and how to be organized and how to study for tests. I found it really important. So I was kind of like putting flyers up like academic coaching. And I was working with some people in the community and I just remember being like, what could I do next? And a friend of mine at the time said, you know, you're really great to talk to. You're really good to talk to. You always help me figure stuff out. You should go into like maybe therapy, you know, or counseling. But to do a counseling or therapy program at the time was just out of reach in terms of my availability, where I would have to go. I just didn't have the time or the capacity having young kids. And, but during the course of that kind of exploration, I heard about coaching. And I think like everybody else, I was like, what is this? I don't know what coaching is. Um, but I just started researching it and kind of like looking at different programs. And I talked to people, I reached out to some coaches and like asked if I could just talk to them for 20 minutes to hear about their experience. And I finally just decided on a coaching certification program. There are tons of them out there. And I found one that resonated with me and was like, you know, I want to learn this. I want to learn this tool and bring it into my work. And um, I went through the program and got the email that I was certified, you know, as a coach. And that's when the work began. <laughs> yeah. And then, so did you coach people one-on-one? -on -one? Oh yeah. I'm a, yeah. My top strength is relator. So, and you have relator as one of your top strengths. So yeah. I, that, that explains probably why you like getting to know people in this way. Yeah. And um, I've always been drawn to one-on-one -on -one work. It's what, it was the focus kind of of my practice for many, many years before I started working in the way that I work now. But even now I have one-on-one -on -one partnerships that I, I'm, I always love. Um but yeah, I kind of, you know, I think like many new coaches, the metaphor I've used, it's almost like you're a little chick that hatches in the middle of Manhattan. <laughs> now what? You know, okay, this is really cool because I wasn't, I didn't want to go get a job as a coach. I wanted to just kind of be a coach and have my own clients, Yeah. but I didn't realize at the time that, that creating clients is like, it's like a totally different job, <laughs> right? It is coaching. Coaching is a job and being a really good coach is being, is a good job and creating clients is like a different job. Yeah. They're intertwined, you know, there's, they're related obviously, but, um, so yeah, so I, I just tried to, I, I signed up for a online business program and how do I build my online business? And, tried to navigate that and answer all the questions that I couldn't really answer, like, and just really kind of entered into what I, I now call the messy middle of just trying to figure it out and find my way. And yeah, one of my, I mean, you know, my first coaching offer was, you know, three sessions for $99. And I had decided that I wanted to work with 
because I had done so much moving and relocation, I was like, I want to help people who are relocating. Oh, okay. That was kind of, you know, I think a lot of times we, we want to help people who are on journeys that we've been on. Right. And I spent all this time moving and trying all these new places that I'm like, I've got some things to say about that. And I now have these tools that I think could help people manage, you know, the emotional mindset side of moving. And so that really kind of was my focus for the first year or two of my practice before, before going rogue. And then, so you started a program called Misfits to Mavericks, which I found out about through my friend, Jill, who's a fellow yeah. coach. And she kept saying, you have to meet Allegra. You have to start her program. You have to, you have to see what she does. And she goes, she's a lot like you. She has a lot of energy and she makes things happen. And I thought, wow, I have to meet this person. And then I joined and it's been fabulous. And, um, yeah. Well, it's fabulous because people, because of people like you. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Um, so part of your program is helping people find their strengths and superpowers. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So that kind of, just for anyone listening, who's like, wait, when did that happen? Misfit to Maverick, which is one of my current kind of coaching projects, it started in 2020. So between kind of the beginning of the story and this time of like, Hey, I think I want to help coaches there was a solid seven, eight years of me navigating the coaching landscape and trying things out and running experiments and just really being in the work and trying to figure out just how to do this thing, not only coaching, but having a coaching practice. So um, in 2019, in the fall, I got cert- a, a second certification and that certification included using the Strengths Finder assessment. It's the Clifton Strengths Finder assessment. And I personally found the results of that assessment for me very transformative. You know, I got the results. I'm like, oh, this is fascinating. I mean, everything that happened just when I saw my results, but then sitting with those results and thinking about them and really just it's just like a whole new lens kind of came in to kind of look at my work and how I approached coaching. And because I had had such like new insight around my work as a coach, it was only a matter of time before I just thought, man, I want every coach to know know this. I wish I had known these things about myself when I began. Yeah. I wish I had known what my superpowers were when I started coaching. Cause I think it would have just changed how I approached it. Right. So that idea combined with just my own story of being in the coaching industry and my own perspective on the coaching industry um, is really what shaped kind of the work that I do now, which is trying to help awesome new coaches navigate this space in a way that feels more creative and fun and aligned to how you do your work, which is different than how I do my work and how that person does their work. And so it's a bit rebellious. It's a bit, it, it feels a bit sometimes like breaking the rules and changing the names of stuff and, um, kind of doing things in a way that we want to do them. Because I find when we do the things we want to do, it's just much more sustainable. Yeah. And just, which leads to more success in the long run, you know? So that's what I'm really inspired by and continue to be inspired by even now. And so people that come into your program, like I did, they usually take this Clifton Strengths Finders test before yeah. they come in. Yeah. So, that's how I did it, but I was yeah. Sure if you've been following, it's the story of the tools that I use kind of has morphed. I'll give you kind of the quick version. Yeah. The tool that I was certified in is called UMAP and UMAP is awesome. UMAP is a combination of four different assessments. Did you get your full UMAP or did you just do strengths and values? I think I just did strengths and values. Okay. 
So UMAP was stre is strengths, values, skills, and interests. It's all four of those things. Okay. And so my original programming was around UMAPs for coaches. We would do the whole thing. And I still believe in that tool. It's still incredible. And what I found was that in the coaching space in particular, strengths and values tended to kind of rise to the top of the conversation, right? So we mm -hmm. look at all four things, but then it's the strengths and values stuff that tend to, tended to be most resonant in the coaching space. Um, now there are other space, anyway, we don't have to get into all that, but so me being kind of the ideator that I am, cause I'm an ideator and an activator. I was like, what would it look like if I just like, what if I tried doing a program that was just strengths and values? What if I kind of pared this down, simplified it instead of doing all four of these, what if we just looked at two and that inspired the strengths um, and the superpowers class, right. That I think yeah. you took which was yeah. about strengths and values in particular. And lately, the most current iteration <laughs> is I was like, what if I just tried strengths? Like, what would it look like? Because I'll have coaches say to me, like, what are my strengths? How do I use them? Yes, that's, a, thought, that's a good I, question. How do you use them? People right. want to know, so like, I once thought, you know your strengths, how, exactly. what do I do with them? That's right. Yeah. So that question that people were asking, I just, I was like, I just need... <laughs> a, a coaching partnership that is just strengths. Like, let's just take your assessment quick. Let's review it. Let's talk about it. And let's start figuring out how to apply it. And that's the current, you know, June, 2022 iteration of it. But knowing me, you know, it could right now I'm really excited about strengths for coaches. Yeah. Maybe I'll circle back and do UMAP for coaches, or maybe I'll try strengths and values for coaches again. Like I've just been, um, having fun experimenting with taking little pieces of things and trying to find the combination that is most impactful for the people I'm working with and most exciting for me to participate in. Yeah. Speaking of experimenting, did, did, yeah. were you like that as a kid? Did you like to experiment I with a lot of things? I don't remember like placing a high value on experimentation as a kid. Like I liked trying things and being outdoors and playing with my friends. And, you know, I liked school. I think my love of, you know, the idea of running experiments really grew and became a part of my kind of high school and college experience because I studied science. I was in the sciences. And so I was just around people and, in conversation around experiments and testing and asking questions and the, you know, the scientific method and guessing and trying things out. And that spirit and that value is one that I've really brought back in now to how I talk about coaching, because I think far too often we try and like figure stuff. I say, we try and figure stuff out in our imagination. And I'm like, why don't we just try it? Why don't we just try it and test it and see how it goes? And, you know, science is a, it's a neutral thing. You, you try something out, you get some results, you change it the next time. There's no failure. There's just information. Yeah. And and data. There's data. Yeah. There's learning. There's there's not sitting on an idea for too long, but actually bringing it to life. And that's the, you know, another one of my top strengths is activator. Like I, I like helping people try stuff and yes, you are you like do. the perfect example of that. You are just, you know, you're doing something, you're trying it, you're testing it, you're experimenting, you're learning it doesn't mean that you're going to be doing this forever. It doesn't mean that you're going to stop tomorrow. It just means that you're actually in it. And that's just like the greatest reward for me is watching coaches like you be like, okay, I'm going to go try it. <laughs> yeah. like, and yes, also um, we like to have fun while we're oh, trying it. So much fun. You know, we don't want it to be a drag when we're trying. Uh -huh. something. And so you are also an ideator. What is that? And were you always, did you always have all of these ideas in your head? 
I think, I think ideation has been something that's always kind of been in the back of my, you know, when I took the assessment and I saw that ideator was a possible strength, I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I never even like, heard of I, that term until I met I just you. thought it was what I did. I just thought like there were times when I thought it was a problem, you know, when I'd be like, oh <laughs> well, shoot, I have a new idea. Well, sometimes it, it is for me because I am always getting new ideas and then I can't sleep. I'm not know. sleeping because of stress. I'm sleeping because I'm excited. I can't sleep because I'm excited. It's very I'm always all, all these ideas keep popping into my head all the time. Well, and like, you know, like we've talked about every strength has its shadow side and that's the shadow side of ideation is like, <laughs> it's just kind of going all the time. But what's interesting is when I look back on what would you call them? I'm thinking of like the assets of my coaching practice for the past decade. So like sales pages, Instagram posts, newsletters that I've sent out titles of workshops, they, so many of them are like, activate your big idea. Yeah. Like I'm using the language of my strengths and it's true in strengths. We speak our strengths all the time. We just don't realize that they are our gifts. Really? So even before I knew that ideator and activator, even before I was using those words intentionally to describe the kind of coach that I am, I was using that language in the coaching experiences I was creating. Like there was a chunk of time where I was like, I just want to help people bring big ideas to life because that's what, you know, ideators are inspired by ideas. They're lit up by new ideas. They want to dig into them. They want to play with them and break them down. And I mean, I love it when someone tells me like, you know what I really want to do? Yeah. And, and then like, you say, what well, do you want to do? do Let it. me help you do it. And then yeah. Combined with my activator, you know, my activator is what's going to then help someone start taking action on it. Yeah, because some people get the ideas, but they never take action. That's right. Yeah. And yesterday, it was interesting in the, on the mentorship call yesterday, it was really cool because in each case, each person on the call, by the time the call was done, had done the thing that they been thinking about for a long time. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was really neat. It was like, and this is just, you know, I always think it's interesting and I don't know, you know, how many of your listeners are coaches, but it's, it's really neat sometimes when you're in a session with, let's say someone's coming for a 45 minute session or a 60 minute session, and they're talking about, let's say how they wish they could start writing I just yeah. want to start writing. I just want to write a, I have the story I want to write. There's something really powerful about saying, well, what if we just stopped talking right now and you just started writing? Yeah. Cause we're all, we're already sitting here. Like right. we're sitting, you're sitting here. There's no, like, you know, I don't have time. I can't do it. It's like, well, what if we just do it right now? Here you go. Let's, let's turn the cameras off and go write for 10 minutes and then come back and then we'll finish the session. And That's so funny. It was that kind of happened yesterday on the call. It happened a few with two of the people on the call where they were like, I think I'm just want to do it. And I said, you want to go do it right now? And they said, okay. That is and so I, funny. You know, I, this is a side note here, but you know, please. my, my friendship accelerator program, mm -hmm. I was on a zoom call coaching one of my clients. And she said, you know, I really want to reach out to this friend because we haven't talked in a very long time. And I want to see if she wants to go do coffee. I go, okay, go ahead. Do it right now. Yeah. Yeah. So she did. She texted her. Well, I said, I'll wait. And I just waited, but you just reminded me of that. I love, I love that idea. Why else are we on these calls with people? If not to help them do the thing that they want to do. Now yeah. I say that there are lots of different angles to coaching and oftentimes deep coaching involves conversation and transformation through conversation. Of but course. I mean, but I mean, a, a coaching conversation can be done in 10 minutes. I think sometimes we attach to the container like, but this is, we need to talk for 45 minutes to make it valuable. But if after 10 minutes, someone is ready to go do the thing or they've, yeah. had, the, they've had the insight, it's, it's just, I learned that from Rich Litvin. It's like coach for insights, not for time. And I love I just, that. Yeah. And it just changes everything because- Otherwise you kind of, we kind of, and it, for me, it's like coach for action. 
Yeah. You should write that down. Coach for action, not for time. And man, if after five minutes you want to go take the action, then my job is done. It's great. I love that. I love that you told somebody to go write and you'd wait for 10 minutes and then they went and wrote yeah. and came back. That's right. That's great. And it was awesome. And she was like, wow, that wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. And, and anticipating it was worse than actually doing it. Yes. And now I'm going to do this every day for the next, and like, it just, so I, I, I hope again, other coaches listening, maybe think about that of like, what is the purpose of our sessions? If not to, yes. to help someone reach this moment. And once they've reached it, let them go play with it. Yes. I yeah. also think Kim, to your point and to your story, which I love so much is that sometimes people just want someone there with them while they do it. Right. You know, That's just true. to be like, oh, okay, I'm going to go say hi. And just knowing that you were there yeah. is a part of your, that's your relator, you know, that's your positivity yeah. shining through in your partnerships of like, so I'm like, oh my gosh, what if it doesn't work out? And you're like, it's going to be fine. Yeah. It's going to be fine. I mean, people can feel that you're, you're just the most lovely person to speak with. And, and I imagine yeah. have as a partner in a coaching partnership. Thank you so much. You're so sweet and kind. You are. Uh, um, have you always jumped in and tried things, even if you were uncomfortable? Have you always just, I mean, you're so brave. You just, anything you say you're going to do, you do. And it doesn't matter who's watching, who's listening. You just do it. I don't know. I don't know that I take action on every idea. I don't know. You know, it's funny. Like there are things that I'm willing to try. Yeah. You try a lot of different things. I do try a lot of things, but it's just because I can't help it because I want to know it's from a place of curiosity of like, what would just happen if I did this? But it's also, you know, it has its pitfalls because it's also very spontaneous. I suspect for people watching, it can be confusing sometimes. Like I'm always aware of that. Like my, my coaching truck kind of changes, kind of never quite know where it is how to find it. But I've just kind of accepted that about myself and made that a part of how I show up and trust that the people who want that kind of person and that kind of energy in their space are okay with that. Like there's this dance and this balance of like, oh, I I should do things differently. But then I'm like, no, I should just do them like I'm going to do them and trust that the people who my, the people I most want to work with want what I'm bringing to the table. And if they don't want what I'm bringing to the table, then they're not the right people for me. Like it's a very interesting uh, balance. So anyway, back to your question. Yeah. I just, I I don't know how to explain it. I don't know if I, I, when you say, do you jump in everything? I'm like, I don't know if I, I don't, I'd have to like, like if you're out with your kids or your husband or friends, do you just spontaneously just think of something and then just do it on the spot? Yes. Sometimes I can really, it's really interesting. I don't know if you saw my newsletter about it a month and a half ago. Sometimes my, I really need to have a plan, which is very interesting because like we were traveling and we woke up one morning and it was like seven in the morning and I had no idea how the day was going to go. Oh yeah. I remember reading that. And I really yeah. wanted to know what we were going to do. I was like, well, we're going to go to breakfast. I knew we were going to go to breakfast. And I'm like, well, what are we going to do after breakfast? And then what are we going to do after that? Because we have like this huge window of time to kill and we don't have a plan. And it just was, I just found myself kind of ruminating on that. And, and I, and then I reached this point where I thought, you know what? We'll figure out step B after we've taken step A. Like we know what step A is. Step A is to go eat. So let's just go eat. And like, I kind of, um, adaptability is another one of my top strengths. And like, I kind of just leaned into that of like, you know what, we're going to figure it out as we go along. Yeah. Let's just go eat. And on the way to eating, we literally saw the sign for the place we decided to check out after we ate. And so after we ate, we turned and followed the sign. And then that (laughs) took us to another place we weren't expecting. And then next thing you know, we're enjoying that. And then that place inspired the next hour or two of our experience. And it just kind of 
was this beautiful lesson and reminder to me that, that none of us can tell the future. Right. <laughs> and we only drive ourselves crazy when we try. Now, there are some people who have futuristic as a strength and strategic as a strength, and they love planning. Like that is their sweet spot. And so, um, you know, my way is not everyone's way, but it was just a good reminder and lesson. And it was an example of me just being like, well, let's turn down here. Let's just, I let's love just go it. down that road and see what happens. And it worked out. Yeah. Sometimes you just don't need a plan. You just don't need a plan. Plans are kind of our ways of, of pretending we know what's going on. <laughs> right. It's a way of like containing the chaos, which is life of just being, well, a plan will helps my brain not get too overwhelmed with what's really happening, which is just a lot of randomness and unpredictability. But sometimes it's nice to just completely release it and just be like, well, let's just do the very next thing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about your program again. Okay. You mentioned mentorship calls that are part of yeah. your program. What are those exactly? Well, I love talking with coaches and I love hearing what coaches are working on and what ideas they've got or what ideas they don't have and helping them come up with ideas. I like helping create projects, coaching projects and marketing projects. And so the mentorship calls, uh, Misfit to Maverick, this community for coaches, it's this awesome community of people, and it's kind of like a mentorship membership. It's really like the easiest way for anyone who's looking for really some direct one-on-one -on -one support to get help every week around whatever it is you're working on, whatever you might feeling stuck around. I kind of love talking about all aspects of coaching from how to run discovery calls to how to get out and start talking about our work and be seen and show up. So um, that's what those calls are. I, I started running them on Tuesdays. So it's just like a predictable day at different times. And the members of Misfit to Maverick are invited to come and post their asks, or sometimes there are no questions posted and we just dive into whatever anyone brings to the call. And those are always really fun and spontaneous. Yeah, so they're and group just, they're group coaching sessions with probably how many people? Like seven to ten people each. It time? depends. Sometimes. There were three people there yesterday. Sometimes yeah. there are ten people there. It depends on the week. But I call it like one-on-one -on -one coaching or mentorship in a small group setting. Okay. Um, which is really quite valuable to everybody because the person in the I call it the love seat gets direct support around whatever they're working on. And we workshop all kinds of stuff and the people watching like learn and take away something quite beautiful from watching that person get yes, coached. You, get record them. you record them and we can watch them back. Yeah. And so it's like, even when people don't have a question, I'm like, you should still come because what, what that other person's <laughs> about to talk yeah. about very likely is going to impact how you think about your own coaching adventure and like, there's just something really beautiful that happens there. Plus it's just an opportunity to connect. Everyone in the community is so kind and supportive and wise and experienced, and we all bring our own strengths to it. So, I mean, sometimes on those calls, I'll be like, I don't know, does anyone else have something to add? Like I, <laughs> yes. I've always, went, for as long as I've been working with coaches, I've always thought, you know, I'm not the only coach in the room here. You're all brilliant people too. Like, are, is anyone seeing something I'm not? So it's, it's just a, a really, I don't know. I love the mentorship calls so much. They're one of my favorite parts of my work and my week. And I'm happy if there's one person there, I'm happy if there are 10 people there, 50, you know, it kind of just depends on what people need when they need it. Yeah. And what other kind of goodies do you offer in your program for all of us? Um, <laughs> I know, but they don't know. So you tell Oh, yes. Well, so there are two, every week there's two kind of primary live events. There's uh, something called the Monday huddle and the Monday huddle is every Monday at noon. Anyone who wants can come on. It's only a half hour and it's kind of an opportunity to kind of commit to do some things that week, you know, kind of accountability. Comes, it's, a, a, it's accountability and it's a form of witnessed commitment of saying, you know what, by Friday, I'm going to do this. And it's very supportive and just I have found them very helpful. And the coaches who've been coming have all been saying, oh my gosh, I got more done this week than I've ever have simply by 
stopping <laughs> and thinking about what is the one thing that I want to get done this week and committing to it and putting it into the room. So they're Monday huddles. The Tuesday mentorship calls is the opportunity for just personalized, you know, very tailored one-on-one -on -one support around whatever project you're working on. Um, members uh, have access to me through Voxer. I use Voxer, it's like a walkie talkie app and I love it. And I've been meaning actually to reach out to everyone just to remind you, like you can reach me on Voxer anytime. I love connecting, I'm high relator also. So while it is a community of coaches, I'm very curious about and always thinking about each person individually. <laughs> like, yeah, thanks for reminding me. I forgot all about Voxer. Oh yeah, it's like, what do you need? I have it, like, but I forgot all about that you like that. Oh, I love it. Oh, I, I've been meaning to send an email out to remind everybody like, you know, you can Vox me anytime. So um, members can Vox if they have a question. I mean, last week, one of the members was going into one of her very first discovery calls. She's like, oh my gosh, someone once said they want to work with me. It's my discovery call, you know, and we Voxed through it and before it about, you know, she's like, so what if she says this? And what if I do that? And like, how do I say that? And I was able to share with her my own experience and, and things that I've learned. Cause I mean, I'm bringing now a decade of experience trying all this stuff out. Kim, like yeah. I have practiced so many of the things that there are to practice that it, it's my pleasure to give away anything that I can to help anyone else. So that was an example of Voxer. It's like, yeah, like Vox me before you send the proposal off and I'll help you see, you know, with any questions that you have. Um, Love it. And then there's workshops, spontaneous workshops come up. Like this Thursday, I'm doing a workshop on community building, everything I've learned about opening up a community and what I wish I'd known when I started. And um, I just added, I need to get it into Misfit to Maverick, but I'm going to do another strengths workshop coming up just to kind of bring people back into their strengths. I want to do a workshop to reintroduce this really cool resource that kind of has gotten buried in all the other things in Misfit to Maverick that I want to bring back to the surface to make sure everyone know that it exists. Um, I'll bring in guest teachers. It's been a little while since I've brought in a guest teacher, but I've simply because I've been trying to simplify and streamline, but I'd like to schedule just spontaneous stuff for members to learn and connect. Um, so those are some of the, well, and not to mention the community board, you know, there's the mighty network where you could go in and post your question 24 yes. seven. What do you need? What do you want feedback on? What could you use? Yes, help that's helpful. Go post it, go yeah. share it. Um, I always say, don't sit on your ask, yeah. you know? And there are going to be people there that are going to help you work through that um, between the calls and everything. So, yeah. And what I like about talking to you is you share your experiences. So mm. when we, when we want to do something, you don't ever say we should, mm. you just say, here's what I've done. Cause we don't want to should people. So no, no shedding, but, but I, <laughs> but no I love shedding. that you do that, that you're, because you're more relatable that way. Oh. You know, I've gone to some coaches where they, they just keep asking me questions, but they're not sharing their own experiences. And I don't find that to be as relatable as what you do. Oh, well, I think that's why I've really adopted the, the idea of mentoring. Cause I think mentoring is that it's sharing everything I've learned. Yeah without expectation that it works for everybody else. But if it does, like, you know, when someone says, well, what questions should I ask to collect feedback? I'm going to say, well, let me show you. I'll give you all my feedback forms. Take what you like. Or, you know, what do I do if someone, what do I do if someone says they want to work together, but then never pays the invoice? I'm yeah. like, well, I can tell you some of the things I've tried with that. You know, what do I do? So recently someone a really great question. Someone's like, I've been working with someone for free and I'm ready to kind of get paid now. How do I make that transition? Well, guess what? I've been there. <laughs> I've, I've, I've navigated that conversation many times. So here's some things to consider and to try. Like I'm again, I like to say I'm an open book. I'll, I'll, I'll give you everything I've got. If it helps, if it helps all of you get out there and try it for yourself, because that's where 
you're all going to find your own way is just practicing it and trying it. I mean, look at you. Two months ago, you were like, so I've been thinking about starting this podcast. And yeah, now that was you're, amazing. You're I've, doing it. It's, I've been wanting to start it. For, by the way, you are such a knowledge vault. Oh, <laughs> you have all the stuff. It's fantastic. But yeah, oh. I think it was about three or four months ago now that I, well, I've been wanting to start a podcast for years. Ah. I would never was brave enough. And so this is all your fault ah. because you just said, just do it. It doesn't matter if it's terrible when you start, because <laughs> who's going to hear it anyway. And so my first one was from my bathroom that I did that just a thought that came into my head. It was only like three minutes long. So good. But everything I would tell you go, well, just do it. Just do it. Okay. And I was scared to death, but I'm so happy I did it. This is one of the funnest things I've ever been involved in. I love interviewing people. I love interviewing you. And it's just been great. So I just wanted to thank you so much for giving me the courage to jump in and do something that I've been wanting to do for so long. Oh my gosh. That makes me so happy. Moments like that just make all of it worth it. I've always, something I've always told myself and that I'm always like, if this helps even one person, it will have been worth it. I am the and one. I, I feel that <laughs> I felt that way. You know, the day that I opened up Misfit to Maverick, I'll never forget it. I'll never oh. forget when I was like, I think I'm going to create a community and I'm going to map it out. And it took, and I'll, I'll, the workshop we're going to do, I'll talk more about yeah. this, but like the runway is long, you know, it wasn't just like the doors open and here it was, it was thinking about it, what's going to be in it, who's going to join it. I'm going to open up. I decided to open it up to founding members. So this was people who were kind of in my world at the beginning. And I was like, if you want to join, you can be a lifetime member. And so it was kind of like the day came when I was like, all right, lifetime memberships are open. And I'd kind of been leading up to it and teasing. And finally, I just clicked send and just waited. And I will never forget when that very first person, it's a Marie, signed up as a founding member. And I just remember oh. looking at that notification and thinking, I will build this for her. Oh. I just was like, I'm going to build it for her. Because I'm like, if she's the only person, I'm going to make this for her. And I, I just, I can, I, I, that's my relator. Oh. I'm like, you know what, Kim? If as a result of this whole experiment, it got you out here sharing your voice and talking to people and doing what you've been thinking about, it's great. It's all I could have hoped for. And the other thing that you talk about is having conversation projects. Mm. That's another thing that I learned from you about yeah. conversation projects. And it's so much fun to get out there and talk to people. It just gets us out of our head. And you even have something about that in... Misfits to Mavericks. You have a whole, what is it? Yeah, on? that was one of the original courses. And yeah. I need to update it if I'm being honest. Like I need to go yeah. in and kind of update it because now actually I've taken the conversation project and um, uh, turned it into an email course. I actually kind of really tried to codify all the steps and the scripts and the why and reason, all the things. Um, and it's available for free now as an email course. So if people go to my website at the bottom of every page is just like a thing where if you enter your email address, you can get the conversation project email course. And oh, that's good to know. Yeah, I just I wanted everybody to be able to have it. So I kind of my next step now is to take that and plug it back into Misfit to Maverick to bring it up to speed. But yeah. that does exist and it's available to anyone who wants to check it out. Okay. Well, tell us where people can find you. They can go to allegrastein.com. That's the simplest place. And you can get the conversation project there, which will get you in my email community where I like to send notes and updates and ideas and random stuff. Um, I'm on Instagram and my handle there is misfit to maverick, the word two, not the number two. So misfit to maverick. And I love popping on Instagram spontaneously and sharing ideas and stories and just things that I hope help someone out there. You can email me or Vox me. I love, I love connecting with people. So if anyone wants to send me a Vox message, I'm there. 
And you're on YouTube too. I am. I, yep. I have a YouTube channel and a podcast. Yeah. And both of those things are on my website. If you go to the contact page on my website, you can, it'll link to the podcast and the YouTube channel. So you can find that there. Is there anything else you wanted to share with us today? No, I mean, I'm just so grateful that you had me on and I love these questions. It's not often that I get to talk about some of my earlier adventures and they were all so pivotal for me that that it's nice to kind of go back and kind of connect those dots again because it all plays a role in what I'm doing now. And, um, and thank you too, for sharing just the things that you're up to. And, and it's, it's just incredibly rewarding to watch. So I'm excited for you. Yeah. Well, thank you, Allegra. It's been an honor to have you here. It's been an honor to be with you. (laughs) I guess I'll I'll let you get back to your puppy now. (laughs) She's done great. Is she she still sleeping? Oh, we could go on for another hour, couldn't we? (laughs) But I think you have coaches to tend to probably. Uh, I, I, I appreciate this so much, Kim. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I will see you soon. Yes. Anytime. You know where I am. Yes. All right. See you soon. Bye.